Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to today's computer literacy lesson on how to use Microsoft Excel. Uh, Microsoft Excel is the primary spreadsheet program used in America and it is an important way to organize information and to um, do mathematical calculations that help you to organize that information. So uh, we are going to be having a class assignment that I'm going to be modeling for you and it is going to um, help you learn how to use Microsoft Excel. And we are going to be using the blank workbook which is always in the upper left hand corner. So we're going to create it right now. And this blank workbook is going to be called and we're going to put this in the A1 box my and so I've got the A1 box highlighted. If I come up here, I can actually type the text. My monthly budget. Because that's what we are going to be creating together as a class is a monthly budget. It is an important thing to have. So notice here, this A box is too small. So if I come up here, click and where the arrow is, I can stretch it so that that title will fit across the top and also allow me to create categories. Also, I don't necessarily like this font today. I want the title to be bigger, so I'm going to drag that to 20. I want the title to be bold. I'm going to italicize the title. And I think because we're going to be dealing with numbers, we are going to use a courier font. So I'm going to use courier new. And there I have my monthly budget. Now the rest of these fields I'm going to highlight because I don't want them to be bold or italicized. So I'm going to unbold them, unitalicize them, and I think I'm going to make them 14. So in order to have budget, you have to have budget categories. So I'm going to put all caps, categories, not categorials, categories. And I'm going to bold that and underline it only in that field. And so what categories do we have when we create a budget? Well, our first category is income. In other words, how much money do you make each month? We're going to call that your pay because you have to have a paycheck. So that one's important, and that one should always be at the top. I'm going to go ahead and stretch this out. Now we're talking money here. So column B, I'm going to highlight all of this. And we are going to go to Format It. I'm going to right click. And I'm going to go down to where it says Format Cells. And I'm going to make sure it says Currency, so that all of the numbers show up as currency. Black means you're in the black, you're making money. Red means you're in the red, that you're, you're not making money. All right, so when we're making a budget, what's the first thing we have to do each, each month? We have to pay our rent if you're renting or our mortgage if you're paying for the house. Uh, most of us have a car. A lot of us haven't paid the car off you got to have a car payment. That's extremely important. Um, another thing you have to have is insurance. There are two types of insurance. There is car insurance and there is rent. Actually we'll call it home insurance and if you're renting uh, that means that that's renter's insurance and if you're a homeowner that means you've got home insurance. All of these are categories I want you to have and catch this kids, I want you to go home and chat with your parents about this so that you actually know what these numbers actually are. You have a realistic concept of what it costs to live in Salem, Oregon in the United States of America. Uh, if you have car payment, car insurance, home insurance, now we're going to get to what we call utilities. So. We'll call this the phone bill. Now for some people, it could be a home phone or a cell phone, or you can combine the two. So if you want to create a separate 
section for the home phone and the cell phone, you can do that. And for some people, their home phone bill is their internet bill. So I'm going to create internet as a separate category. Um, but if you have the internet, it may come through your cable company, it may come through your phone company. So, um, so this could be cable. I'm going to call it cable. Okay. So for some of you, internet would be on your phone bill. For some of you, internet would be on your cable bill. And for some of you, you don't have internet. Okay. There's always the electric bill that you need to pay. Um, some people have a gas bill. Some people don't. You might not have a gas bill. If you're renting, chances are you don't have a gas bill. Uh, if you own your house, you have a water bill you have to pay each month. Uh, if you don't own your house, in most cases, if you rent, the water bill is paid. Um, and we're going to call this gas and car maintenance. So if you have to put gas in your car, you need to pay for that. Car maintenance, that's things like oil changes or whenever you need to fix your car. The very important groceries budget. Um, is very important and you should also have a clothing budget although that might not be every month um, you should also have a savings budget if you're a good spender of money and just to keep things fresh you should have a miscellaneous budget category okay now, I'm actually going to go up here and I'm going to press right click and insert because I want a space between my income and my expenses. All right, and then we're going to have a total box here. And the total means that's the total of our expenses for the month. And I'm going to make that bold. So there we have all of our monthly budget categories. If you have something else that's important to you, Oh, you know what? I'm actually going to throw another one in. I'm going to go ahead and insert entertainment. There we go. So I'm going to base this budget on a theoretical family of four. OK? And I'm going to assume that we are um, living in a small house with a reasonable mortgage. And so these numbers I'm kind of coming up with out of thin air, but um, we're just going to pop them in here. So my income is $3,000 a month. I am a single parent. That's my paycheck. Notice when I click on it, that automatically went to currency because we formatted the cells. My rent each month, I have a family of four. So um, I'm the sole breadwinner. Um, my wife um, lives at home and takes care of the kids, so I don't have child care costs. And my mortgage payment is, just for the sake of argument, $1,000 a month. So there's one third of my income. Um, I have a car payment that is $150 a month. It's a five year loan. My car was $10,000 and I bought it used. So I have about $150 a month in, uh, for my car payment. And my car insurance is also going to cost me $150 a month for me and my wife, because my kids are not old enough to drive yet. Uh, my homeowner's insurance is going to cost me $50 a month. And again, I'm approximating here, but that's about what it should cost. Now, here's where things get fresh and fun. If I have a home phone and I have a cell phone, those two bills combined for two people, and this is assuming my kids don't have a cell phone, it's probably going to be, and this is a low number, frankly, it's probably higher than this, 200 bucks a month. Uh, my cable bill, if I give myself the luxury of having cable, is usually going to be $75 a month. Now, if I were to get cable through my internet through the cable company, this would probably be closer to 120 and this would be closer to 150 so we could do that. Um, my electric bill is probably going to be about $50 a month. Well, actually, no, let's make it more realistic, $65 a month. 
Um, gas bill, let's assume it's summertime, fortune, and I have a gas stove. I'm not using the gas to heat the house. That's usually about $15 a month. Um, my water bill, depending on how much I water the lawn and how long people's showers are, my water bill is always around $90 a month. Um, by the way, I need to spell maintenance right, don't I? Let's go back up here so you can fix the spelling up above. And there we go. And it should be maintenance like that. Gas and car maintenance. Four tanks of gas. I have a fuel efficient car. Gas is going for about $250 a gallon right now. I have a 12 gallon tank. So that's going to cost me about $27 every time I fill the tank, say $27.50 and I buy four tanks of gas per month with one car that I share with my wife, we're talking $110. Groceries for a family of four. I'll be honest with you kids, it's probably gonna talk, take more than this, but we're gonna say $500 for groceries at a minimum. So. The reason I put clothing, entertainment, savings, and miscellaneous at the bottom is if you don't have money for those things, those things are not things you have to have every month. Those are wants. All of these here are needs. You got to take care of your needs before you take care of your wants. So I am going to total up the costs of box column six, or actually row six, all the way down to row, I'll actually make it row 20 even though there's nothing in those. So what we would do if we're doing that is you would go equals sum, S-U-M, all capital letters. Then you're going to put a parentheses mark like that. And my first box is going to be, if we pay attention here, um, B, it's column B, it's not showing you that right now, but it's actually column B. So we're going to go B6. See how it says B6 at the bottom? Two. And then we're going to put a colon. No. And we're going to go B20 right there. Notice how the blue box forms there? That tells us that everything in that blue box is going to be part of what we add. We're going to put N parentheses there. We're going to hit Enter. And so look at that. We've spent $2,400. That means we have $600 left over. Now. If I'm a good person, I'm going to put $300 into savings for a rainy day. So if I have anything going on where I need money in a pinch, I've got it. And so that leaves me $300 left over. I'm going to put $100 for clothes, $100 for entertainment. Let me tell you kids, this isn't much. And $100 for random other things. And notice. Um, we're going to go income, this is going to be income minus expenses. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, in a perfect world, and this will be, this is box B21. Actually, no, our income is box B4. This is box B21. So watch this. B4 minus B21 going to hit return. That's what should happen, folks. It should come out to zero. Okay. Um, and any, if it doesn't come out to zero and you have extra left over, throw that into your savings account. Um, this is a semi-realistic budget, but I'll be honest, for your parents and for most people, these kinds of things are a struggle. Uh, and honestly, $500 is a pretty low amount for groceries. Uh, entertainment, uh, $100 is not much. If you're taking out a family of four to the movies, you're going to shoot half that budget in a single night. Um, this is a fairly low car payment. I'm assuming that's a used car. And that's a used car that I bought for maybe $10,000, um, you know, over five years. Uh, car insurance, yeah, that's, that's ballpark. That's ballpark. Your home insurance, that's probably on the low side. Cell phone and internet combined are probably going to be higher than that. Um, so this is an example, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and make the income bold there. This is an example, but what I want you to do is actually go home, 
have a conversation with your parents and actually come up with numbers that are actually real and talk to them about how they make these decisions because these are pretty important decisions to make. This is going to be assignment for kids. Uh, I do expect you to come up with a budget that's realistic and to put in the mathematical calculations that I've showed you. Uh, and uh, while we're at it, let's go ahead and look at some bells and whistles you can do here. Uh, you have format the table. If I want to make this table look different, I can choose any one of these lovely options. So say I wanted to do this. Nope, didn't work. Say I want to do it to the entire table. Go up to your format, click on it. See what it does to me. Look what I just did there. I made it look all fancy. Now I can come up here, I can undo that. So everything's back to normal. Let's go to format. Uh, let's try this out. Table dark. Do do. Let's see what that does to us. Wait for the rotating circle of death to end. It is not ending. It is the rotating circle of death. And it's not responding. You know what, kids? I almost don't care about this. I'm going to press Escape. I'm going to come down here, and for the time being, I'm going to end the video because the bells and whistles on Excel are less important to me than that you know how to create a budget and use the mathematical function. So for now, this is Mr. Blumendahl signing off. We'll have a little bit more fun with Excel down the road, but keep on trucking, kids. This is Assignment 4.